All right, good morning. Yeah, I'm getting it back. I'm getting some size back, putting size on, putting size on. Oh, man. I tell you, every year it gets harder. Sunday morning, it is an absolutely gorgeous day out of Scorcher. Bright sunlight, nice day. Rode to the gym yesterday. We're going to ride to the gym again today. So, we got to start off. All I've had so far this morning, food-wise, it's still relatively early. Um, typically, I have quite a bit of food. Of course, the usual shit, oatmeal, um, a handful of blueberries in the oatmeal, a bunch of cinnamon in the oatmeal. I'll have that, and then I'll have, <clears throat> probably consume anywhere from a liter to a liter and a half of uh, Fairlife milk in the course of the morning before the gym. And I'll probably also have a protein drink at some point, maybe when I first got up. Today all I've had is a protein drink this morning. Uh, not even any quick proteins, uh, beef. Beef, beef oriented, uh, hydrolyzed protein. 40 grams, not really a lot. <clears throat> but because I eat so much generally, I think it's okay once in a while if you get up and you don't feel like eating and the distinction is you don't want to not feel like eating because you're not accustomed to eating. You have to be able to eat. You have to be able to feed yourself. It's all an eating game. Anybody that tries to tell you otherwise isn't big, are they? Because anything else is bullshit. It's an eating game. Um, but I think it's okay you typically eat like that it's, it's, it's okay to give your body a break once in a while and not eat like that. So, you know, and plus I have my carbolin. So I have the carbolin this morning in my pre-workout when I go to the gym, which I'm getting ready to do, ride the bike. And that's going to be equal to, I think, 100. I'll use 100 probably grams of carbolin. I'm, you know what? I may use 150 today, 150 grams of carbolin. So I'll have all the nutrition that I need. So let me put some carbolin in here. You have to be wise, conscious of which one you get. This is carbolin fuel. You could get hydrate or something else, carbolin. Still carbolin. Difference is the scoop size, Joe. I mean, there are other subtle differences, but the real difference that matters to me, size of the scoop. See, this scoop is 50 gram scoop. Some carbolin mixtures only have a 25 gram scoop. I like the 50 gram scoop, it's just doesn't make any difference. You do two of one scoop or one of one scoop to get 50 grams and then multiply that by how many scoops you need to achieve whatever you're shooting for. So I've got 150 grams of carbon in here, which this stuff mixes instantaneously. You swirl it around, it's completely um, suspended in the water. I mix it with water this morning. I sometimes I use beet juice. So we got the carbon in there. And then we got to go up into this cabinet. <laughs> Uh, L arginine, not the HCL. The HCL just doesn't get it done no matter how much I take. Uh, this I'm going to take about nine to ten grams, which is going to be the equivalent. This is three gram scoops. It's going to be the equivalent of three of these three of these little scoops. And I take them. They're pretty liberal sized scoops, so probably better to err on the side of less then to overdo it. If you overdo it, you'll know it. Okay, so I got that. And lately, I'm using this, Hydraulic Action Sledge. I think it's an outstanding product, and of course I'm using the uh, whiskey and color flavor. It tastes exactly like Jack and Coke. So much so that he got a cease and desist letter. And he's not the only one that those letters are going to go around. There's some other people that are going to get those letters from different sources for different reasons, but uh, and they'll either abide or they won't. Like, you know, so Seth changed the name to Whiskey and Cola. I don't know if he was referring to it as Jack before. Anyway, I'll use two heaping, heaping scoops of this. Think about hydraulic. It's got everything you want in there, everything I want, and then some for the pump. And it has it in the right amounts. It has it in liberal amounts. Most of these things, they don't have enough of any any single ingredient in it. They have tons of everything, but 
such small ingredients, none of it's going to do shit. This has a good helping of the shit you need. So I use this. Then <coughs> uh, I am going to put a little extra house again, El Citrulline, Matt's company. A little El Citrulline in there. I use a big ass scoop. If I can get 20 grams of El Citrulline, I think that that's a win. 27 grams is better. Round about there. And organic greens. I'm not going to put that in there right this minute. But I'm definitely, definitely going to put uh, Spore Formula Multivitamin. Two heaping scoops in my pre-workout. Cover anything my nutrition, my nutritional plan otherwise doesn't have. Relax. What is that other? Oh, oh, amino energy. Uh, I'm not gonna forget that. I haven't been sleeping exactly wonderfully. So, lately, I get enough sleep now. I do all right. How much sleep do you need? You need sleep. You need good, restful sleep. I take two big scoops of this shit. Uh, or maybe one huge, huge mountainous scoop. Yeah, maybe a little extra. Okay. Which is probably around... I'm going to say it's probably... <laughs> 350 or 400 grams of caffeine, but before you you know go, whoa, it's a lot. I've had other products that claim to have 400 grams of caffeine, and if this really totals 350 or 400 grams, what I just put in there, uh, it's much milder effect. Absolutely, I feel it. It does what I need it to do, but I've had other things out there, like Total War, for example, by Redcon 1. I can't even use that. That shit's overwhelmingly powerful. I had a case of those bad boys. We were drinking them half at a time. That's how strong they were. They claimed 400 grams of caffeine. Now, whatever form the caffeine is or combination thereof, theirs is super, super potent. Super potent. So if you're a caffeine junkie, man, that's some really powerful shit. So that's all that needs to be in there. Uh, so yeah, I end up with this much powder. So that looks ridiculous, right? But if you're used to low quality products, and no slight, I'm just saying factually, then that's a lot of powder. That powder is going to be difficult and chunky and every other thing, right? Thick. But I'll put enough water in here. As soon as I put water in here, it'll instantly start to dissolve. And all this stuff suspends really well. So once I put water in and shake it up, now, it'll, it'll take a lot more water than what you see room for right there, right now. A lot more. Uh, so, I'll probably drink half of this, put the other half in my saddlebags, head to the gym, drink the other half when I get to the gym. So, let's move out. All right. I went to the gym. Went by the grocery store, had to pick up some staples, a few items, put them in the saddlebags, rode home. Now it's beginning to kind of get a little bit cloudy. There's a little bit of a nicer breeze, but it was hellaciously hot earlier. Nice though, awesome riding weather. Rob's bike is just about finished. We've been taking our time with it. Just uh, the heat, work, every other thing. Just doing a little here and there after work, but it's it could it's an hour away from running if we wanted to just complete it now. Uh, if anybody's interested. Uh, last week I did do one of my Saturday night bullshit videos. I think in my opinion, I think it was the best one yet. But it kind of um, evolved into uh, or devolved I guess as YouTube would think would would uh, assess it into a, a bit of a party um, there's some people in town that came by and uh, had quite a few very cool motorcycles over here and you know played the music and uh, had a bullshit session but 
that video got banned. That video was not allowed to run at all. Uh, one prior to that, they shut it down because of the music. Well, they muted it. They were going to mute it, and that basically just destroyed the video. And that's my fault. I've been pushing my luck with the music. They've been demonetizing it, so I figured it was okay. But uh, they weren't having it anymore, so I guess that's over. But the Saturday Night Bullshit one last week was really good, but I guess it was a little too much, which is kind of surprising. Because there's a lot of stuff on here on YouTube that I think is... Yeah. Anyway. So, get back today. I did not do biceps because I'm going to do biceps out here in a little while and I'm going to video that so that'll be another video I'll, I will get up today this, this afternoon early evening something As people seem to enjoy those videos training videos oh lord it's hot so biceps training arm training Let's talk about that briefly uh, in light of the video that's going to be coming next today where I want to make the video concise and kind of short -er. so I want to get the talking out now and what's to be said about it I remember when I first began to train biceps when I first really started to try to develop some arm size at all any muscle I, uh, I had couple crankshafts that I got from work. I had like a four-cylinder crankshaft and a six-cylinder crankshaft and a V8 crankshaft. So I had these three crankshafts and that's what I had for weights initially. That's initially, that's the arm work I did. I curled those crankshafts a lot. So there is something to be said for that. Later on, you know, you'll get more, I don't know, you, you believe that you got more efficient, more focused, uh, expanded your knowledge base, you got actual equipment, and you learned to train. But there's still something to be said for how often and how frequently I would curl things when uh, I was first beginning to try to build some bicep mass. Um, and the forearm, I've always had decent forearms, they grew relatively proportionally to my biceps and my triceps because I turn wrenches for a living and always have and because initially I think there's crankshifts because there's no real way to actually hold them um, ergonomically biomechanically other than just to grab it and grip it like in a real world situation where you're picking something up and it's not designed specifically as an item that you're going to pick up and curl and work out with so Hanging on to these, these, these crankshafts and curling these things um, was a little bit awkward, but that's initially, that was the first exercises that I did for biceps. I did a lot of curling of crankshafts. I had three different weight, weighted crankshafts, and they, like I said, one was a four-cylinder, then a six-cylinder, and an eight-cylinder, so they varied in weight uh, more so than just jumping up one dumbbell, right? So it is what it is. I curled those, and even with triceps, what I usually did were uh, a lot of push-ups, and I did chair, ex chair exercises, dips on chairs, and I did different kinds. Hands would be closer together behind me on a single chair doing dips, going all the way down and back up, and then I would have two chairs, one at each side, doing dips between them. You know, sometimes I'd have two tables if I found myself in a situation like that. It wasn't like I was a heavy guy at the time. I was pretty light, and I would, between the two tables, suspend myself, hold my feet out in front of me crossed, just so that they're off the floor or they're barely touching the floor by my heels, and, and do uh, tricep dips. So that was what I had, lots of dips. And I would take the crankshaft and do French presses behind my head with the crankshaft. So I just did creative, creatively what I could come up with work my arms with those items and um, yeah I, I, I grew from that initially I grew from that uh, I think that the primary weak point uh, in my 
initial training as far as an interest to build muscle was I didn't understand nutrition. I didn't have a handle on nutrition like I would later develop. And um, I knew it was important. I knew muscle was made out of food, protein, and that I had to eat or consume food. You know, I did the gallon of milk a day thing. Back then it was a whole, whole milk. I don't even think I could drink a, a gallon of whole milk a day now without making myself ill. But uh, I did the gallon of milk a thing, a gallon of milk a day thing, and I did protein powders, of course, because I'm reading the magazines. That's all we had. There wasn't any internet. That was decades away. And I would try to mimic the workouts I saw in magazines. And uh, I started out with the weeder protein powders that and that, at that time, the protein powders that I had, they didn't mix. The mixability of these protein powders was really lame. So it was always chunky and dusty and just nasty. And some of the stuff that I, I tried was like concrete in the shaker cups. You know, when you would finish drinking your, your protein drink and you'd have to wash these things out, some of this stuff was like concrete digging it out of there. You know, and then the initial protein bar back then was a power bar and that thing was so chewy and gritty uh, you, you had to have good teeth which back then I, I had good teeth I was young and uh, you had to have good teeth to chew those things because you had to have a jaw like a pit bull basically uh, and I didn't of course have a, a, a huge appetite back then I wasn't accustomed to trying to force feed myself I was a thin guy That's uh, initially how I began to build my arms. That's the ground, the, the foundational groundwork that I laid. It was just the repetitive, repetitiveness, the high frequency with which I would just curl objects, whatever I could curl, whatever I could press, whatever I could turn into some manner of tricep exercise, uh, and the dips and things between chairs with chairs. And that initially, uh, that initially garnered me some arm development. So, in a little while, I will be sweating my ass off out here doing an arm routine for biceps, a bicep routine only. And it will be, I will actually work out. I won't show every set and every rep, but I will explain and talk about it. So that's all. That's it for now, man. I'm going to uh, I'm going to drink this super coffee and uh, maybe take my bike out a little more, a little while longer, and get some more sun. Hope you guys are having an awesome weekend. Hope you've had a great week. Um, I do have a video coming that I need to put up pretty soon. Maybe tonight. Maybe tomorrow that will feature a lot of uh, our motorcycles, our motorcycles as in our motorcycles, you guys, here, in there, stuff that people have sent me, some people I have known and ridden with, and uh, other people I've only known through the comments section or through emails, and we, uh, and quite a few people are close enough, we need to get together and do some riding and some of that jazz. So that's all I have for now. Um, guys, take care. Have a wonderful day.